Father, thank you for allowing us yet again to breathe and smell and to taste and to feel and to see, to be able to function, Father God, in, 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 in a world that is so challenging. And we thank you for the meals we've had today, for the, facing the disappointments that make us stronger. And help on us, Father God, to learn how to live our lives seeking a deeper and closer relationship with your Son, Christ Jesus, through whom we pray. Amen. I had at the last minute sent out a um, text message asking you to uh, join me in the book of Philemon. I remember my first uh, Bible class at... Um, well, not first Bible class, but I was at um, Bucks Avenue, and uh, for some reason I spoke out loud, and I and I I call it uh, Philemon, and I think I was the only one in the class that knew that it wasn't, that didn't know that it was Philemon, and um, people gently, nicely let me know that it was Philemon, and uh, I was too young in the Lord to not be embarrassed. I call it. Philemon, except I've actually heard a record where a female uh, 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 gospel uh, singer called it uh, Philemon, and I've heard other people say, I, I don't feel bad at all, but uh, we don't often get to the book of Philemon, but if you have your Bibles and, and uh, the devices that will get you there, I would love for you to join me in the book of Philemon. Uh, you know, uh, and, well, I don't have time to go into a lot of historical data, putting it in its proper context and that kind of thing, but Paul is a, is, he's a prisoner. He's writing a letter to Philemon, and he's, I, I, he's writing a letter that he wants a favor to be able to return uh, Onesimus. Uh, back to Paul because he ran away as a slave. So he's trying to correct the situation. So Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, Philemon my dear friend and, and fellow worker, Theophia, our sister, our cheapest, our fellow soldier, and to the church that meets in your home. Notice that Paul says where he is, what his issues are, and but he greets people. He has this kind of way of recognizing the bond. He recognizes my fellow worker, our sister, fellow soldier, and the group that meets there in your home. There's something about small groups uh, when they're functioning as, as one that gives you such a sense of comfort so that when you are greeting in their name, you are really not excluding anyone. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. I think we probably have heard the word grace so many times that I'm not sure that we've ever understood it. Except in the context that we're thinking of our sinfulness, and since God has forgiven us of our sins, but it is so much more than that. And I would, I would love to have the capacity to actually share a broader perspective of what grace is, but it is truly a significant part of life and the way that Jesus has promised us life. It wasn't just about sin, it was about living. It is about pursuit of life and pursuit of those things that are beyond um, things that you can buy. Nonetheless, he, verse 4, he said, I always Thank my God as you, I remember you in my prayers because I hear about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints. Think about that. Think about that, beloved. If, if, I, if, I, if, I can, if you can always think, notice it, my God, you think of God as your God. And then remember you, the brothers and sisters, because I've heard about your faith. We are not, uh, he's just not saying I remember you, which would be good, but they're on one accord and they're on one mission. That is to grow and to trust Christ Jesus for their salvation 
in their daily comings and goings. And he says, I, I heard about your love for all of the saints. Would, would you ever want to be a part of a church that lived out 1 John 4, 7 and 8? Not certain chairs or certain groups, not certain age groups, but truly love the church. And this is not the same level of feeling, not even the same level of commitment. And just imagine that you thought enough of every member to know their name and to want the very best of them and to want them to never come to harm so that they stay on your mind at some point or the other and somebody asks for prayers for them or they're not able to assemble or not willing to assemble that you actually miss each other. I mean, truly miss each other. And you begin to ask and inquire, and then you get that number and you text them and you call them. This is what's going on here. It is a relationship. Verse 6, you see, I pray that you may be active in sharing your faith so that you will have a full understanding of every good thing we have in Christ. Your love has given me great joy and encouragement because you, brothers, uh, you, brother, him very specifically, have refreshed the heart of the saints. God, <laughs> my goodness, I, I, I just love that passage. I, I did not plan to use this passage tonight. I just, um, when that thing hit me, have refreshed the hearts of the church. Oh, me. Oh, man. Throughout my time here, throughout my time in working with each of you and all of you, more at some times than the other, we've gone through so many things together. And I just had it in my head today. So, so Lord, show me how I can revive and how I can draw a picture of the usness, the weeness. Uh, it's an us thing. And, and how we uh, not only look back, but look at today and, and look forward to how we can refresh one another. And we didn't just get here because one day we got here. But the love that Paul had heard about, the sharing, uh, the working hard for the broader community, that's what you see on the screen now. Uh, the first one is from the uh, Country Club Church of Christ. And back in 2003, when we used to support the rally, not only did when they had the youth rallies, we supported it financially. We were the biggest financial supporter. We also sent a, a group of, of children. And then we have supported the Substance Abuse Recovery Month. Every year, we let them use the building to train free of charge about 120 to 150 people in dealing with substance abuse recovery. And then there's a child welfare system uh, where we work with child welfare in a faith community partnership and actually ended up with a couple of a few people who became foster parents. And then getting back to the area wide the youth fellowship that was held at the congregation there, that was another one. And then the same thing at Carver Road. So over the years, that's just a couple of things we've done. But refreshing each other is reminding each other that the hearts, that our hearts need to be refreshed. You, you dear brother or sister, have refreshed the hearts of the Lord's people. Can you? Did you think about that? Sometimes you reflect on the people who have refreshed your heart. There is usually somebody who will say something to you and uh, at just the right time. That's a point, there's a time when you, you just need somebody. And they seem to know how to perk things up for you. They know how to uh, just make you feel good. So it's kind of like an everyday in-touch thing. Yeah, we have an in-touch ministry, but this is something extra. This is when the members are 
touching base with each other just because. Same thing would be like, like remembering to send you the grandma birthday card. So it's nice to squeeze in between the, the big stuff that dominates our ministries, the Woman's Day and, and, and Homecoming and, and the Audio family, but just to have the time in between. Well, just like we put energy into these things, can you imagine putting energy into those who are weary and lonely? and thirsty. And many of our members are, um, we just look at everybody when we were assembling, I think because everybody looks good, wearing a lipstick and, and, and you know, different hairstyles and, and you know, dress to the lines as they say, or dressing any way they want to. But you cannot, cannot look at a person's uh, out of appearance and understand how weary and lonely and thirsty people are. But you can look at the woman and the man in the mirror. So caring enough, refreshing the hearts of the saints. Then it, then it, it is never then about um, the worship leader and the particular song. Just imagine maturing enough that, yeah, you have your weariness and your loneliness and your thirstiness. And when you don't hear the right song and you don't hear the message preached the right where something doesn't happen, community doesn't mean anything. But suppose you came to the assembly and you determined that you're going to target one person that you normally don't say anything to and you're going to reintroduce yourself or you're going to find a way just to talk to that particular person. See, when somebody wants to talk to us, when, when somebody wants to engage us, um, they're not always going to say so. And you, you've been that way, haven't you? That you just, um, just didn't say anything, but you were weary. And loneliness and weariness can do that, can't it? I mean, I have to deal with that myself. And uh, I'm, I'm not ashamed of my role. I'm not ashamed of, uh, of anything else. It's just tiresome. And uh, life has always been a struggle in so many different ways. And we, we're not interested in giving up. But this is how we learn how to get closer to the Lord Jesus Christ by having a heart for the weary and the lonely and the thirsty. Because when you're weary, if you're lonely, you don't even know how to ask for what you need for your thirst. But you, dear sisters, Dear brother, refresh the hearts of the Lord's people. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> I try to think about the, the, the dirty, difficult places where brothers and sisters work every week. Now, now, when I read this, you'll catch what I'm saying. Some offices are dirtier than suits. Some schools are darker than tunnels. And a lot of the, the members of the church, a lot of Christians, spend their week trying to keep the dunk off their hearts, trying to keep their souls from smelling like a cesspool. But what does that have to do with anything? We become weary when we often have to work among people who don't have the ethics, the morals, the salvation. The people are always scheming always trying to undercut you. And it does not matter what their ethnicity is, their gender, doesn't matter what their politics or their so-called religion, folk will do a number on you. And so there's like a sewer system, and you know what's in a sewer system. Um, if, you, if you don't Google it, then you, you'll find out uh, the, the sneaky side of the story. But anyway, officers uh, working in, in, in public health and working um, hospitals and working in um, uh, mental health and, and for agencies that support and serve people who are struggling with their, their Medicare, their Medicaid, and, and, and getting their children covered and speaking a different language. And, and, and sometimes you have to deal with your coworkers doing it. 
sometimes the schools are like that too. That's some stuff that you send your kid to school and they come back worse off ethically and morally and, and scripturally. And so not everybody has a job like that, but often people come out just trying to survive. I used to think that I would love to have had a job in such a field. Uh, at, at one time, I, I was a consultant with the state and uh, I was doing some federal work. And once I started spending time with the federal workers, everybody's broken down. They couldn't wait to uh, retire. But those federal jobs, with that's thinking, it took its toll on people's health. Many of them are going to retire with their health if they're lost. Some job situations are not bad as others. But in this congregation, there are people who on some given week will come in having fought off everything they could to get here. And it would have been nice if somebody had refreshed their soul on Thursday. Certainly would have been nice. We, we want to draw the refreshment that pours forth from the Spirit's well springing up within us. Greater is he that's in us, he that's in you, than he that's in the world. And whatever your job is like, whatever uh, your situations are like, listen, Paul says to them in verse 5, I hear about your love for all his holy people and your faith in the Lord Jesus. Have you ever been around somebody that loves the church? And trusted that no matter what happened, Jesus will still be standing through it all. That's our well of refreshment. Love for them and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, and both of those are struggle. We, we talked Sunday about um, the difference between knowing Jesus and knowing about him. And God has made it in my, my spirit to continue to do that, so we're going to dig deeper. That's going to be our message if God allows us to hear uh, in, 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 in knowing who the Lord is and the spirit within us and the refreshment that it brings and causes us to be truthful to each other, truthful with each other, look out for each other, build each other up, overlook some things that, that uh, can often bother us about a person. But loving saints and trusting the Lord Jesus for them, for your job, for your own well-being. And that's powerful stuff. You talk about refreshing, what else could you want? Because if you don't, you'll get stagnant. The people that you offer something to do will get stagnant. You can have lunch. And you can, can have lunch parties for different, celebrate certain things. But if you're not constantly feeding God's people, you're not constantly trusting God and growing and maturing. We just go through, just go through things, beloved. We will. And it becomes stagnant. No, nobody likes to be stagnant. No, nobody likes, but it will happen. It will happen. But we do know that the wellspring that's within us does not stagnate. And it's activated there by our sharing our love for the saints. Now, if you watch the Super Bowl or if you watch football, uh, and, and you see this in, in other games too, but it's more visible than football. There are people who are running around with a, a um, container with, um, uh, I'm looking at them with these green ones or whatever, but they're always squirting the players in their mouths with Gatorade and, and because it's not just water they need. When they're out there on that field like that, they, um, those players are giving off a lot of energy they need to be hydrated. And so there are some people, you see, they're not coaches. They're not assistant coaches. They're none of that. They simply 
run up to the players when the time is when there's a timeout or when they come to the sideline. And they squirt the Gatorade in their mouths to restore the electrolyte and keep them hydrated. That's their job. And that's what they do. And just so, you know, everybody hasn't been called to be a preacher. Thank God Almighty. I wouldn't put that on anybody. But just imagine who in the church that you know of simply keeps people hydrated. <laughs> you squirt the electrolytes. You keep them going because you see what they do out there. And, and you are gifted by God to see people. Not many people will see people. And so we have to always circulate among our people, no matter how we do it, offering them that thing that Paul started off with, grace, 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 grace. Helping, helping them to let go of attitudes and things that are just tripping them up. Well, I, I have no capacity to help anybody let go of the negative attitudes that we have about ourselves. I have to wrestle with my own. But the longer I live, the more I realize that much of, of what I wrestle with, God is not wrestling with. When he called me, I was that way, and he's okay with me being that way. But there are some other things that he himself will transform. But I just let other folk get into my skin, get into my head Although I thought that I was, wasn't going to let that happen, I, I, I have. And it's, it's what I'm saying, love, the little thing, that's all we're saying. Just offering grace to the brothers and sisters in little ways. So the, the, the powerful uh, story we have here for uh, Philemon uh, my mouse is acting up, so I'm trying to stop this area, but uh, I'm going to get you know, all the beautiful technology. Um, this this book is just, I, I should have been reading it and studying and teaching uh, out of it more. Um, um, Paul says, therefore, in verse 8, in Christ I could be bold and order you to do what you ought to do, yet. I appeal to you on the basis of love. Does, love. does love appeal to you? I mean, for real. That's love. You've heard about it so many times, and I know you're probably sick of it at South Central, but does it ever appeal to you? I mean, does it ever actually appeal to you? And Paul says, I could make you do it because I have the authority, but I don't want to do that. <laughs> I want to go deep inside you and let the Holy Spirit prompt you to do the things that's to be done a certain way. That means you have to override all of this other stuff that we normally carry around, so easily offended, so easily bothered by things, and so easy to misconstrue just the most simple thing. And he said, I could go there, argue with you, deal with you, make you do some things by uh, apostolic authority. I don't want to do that. You were created by God to function out of your love. Yet I appeal to you on the basis of love. I then, Paul, an old man, a prisoner. I appeal to you for my son, Onesimus, who became my son while I was in chain. Look at verse 12. I am sending him, who is my very heart, back to you. Man, Paul ain't playing no game. He's laying it on thick. You know, he, he wants Onesimus to go back to Philemon, and he's saying, Philemon, you owe me your life, but I'm not. I'm not I'm an old man. I got a lot of stuff going on. I'm not going to demand anything from him. But I'm sending back this guy who has become my own heart. And I need you to take him back. As a brother, I'm not a slave. This going to be a slave, but he'll be your brother. And you will treat each other uh, differently. So then in verse 20, I do wish, brother, that I may have some benefit from you in the, in the Lord. Refresh my heart. In Christ. Refresh my heart. Does your heart need refreshing? What would someone have to do? What would they have to say? 
how can a person refresh to eat? What does it take, beloved, for you to be refreshed? That's not a rhetorical question. We only got a couple of minutes left, but I'm asking you, what does it take to refresh you? I have a lot of time. I want to hear one answer. Well, I'll talk. I need, to, I need to sing a song to refresh you. Huh? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, um, it doesn't. Um, at least for me, when I when I'm reading the text, um, I don't need a lot for refreshing, but I um have to be outside of myself to recognize the need in others. Um, and not just assume that everybody is, in a sense, has my kind of personality where I just go, you know, uh, but to be able to stop for a moment and recognize the need in my brothers and sisters, um, even if it's like you said, something smaller for a moment, um, to not just always pass by in a moment. Um, so for me, it's just being more in tune um, I have been more in the past, but just recognizing that I need to be more um, in tune um, in these times. Just imagine, Kenny, that's wonderful. The fact that you recognize we need to be more in tune. It's so, it's so easy to get busy. Everybody's trying to survive. But that same thing is what puts everybody in the point of weariness and you just want to go home and, and just chill and whatever else. But at some point, we, we need you. Somebody in the church needs to hear something from you. So what is it that refreshes you, beloved? What's the one thing that refreshes you when, no, when nothing else works? What is it that refreshes you? Some good old gospel singing. Wow. Um, <laughs> that, that refreshes me. Um, and um, I think because you just mentioned one, I was going to name a few things. But I know okay. what has refreshed me in doing certain times. It could be a text that's encouraging. Um, it could be just, um, it used to be a hug or a visit or just getting a card in the mail unexpectedly. Or, and so those, those are some, or getting a call unexpectedly. I've been trying to do that. Um, call people that I don't normally call. I said I was going to call at least two people each weekend. That's different. And maybe I get to do more, but I did that last weekend and it was really refreshing to have that fellowship with them. Um, I, Sister Veronica Foster was one and Sister Stringer was the other. I just let her know I really miss your ten tender voice. Your tender voice. Sometimes I would sit right in front of her or she would come and she sit behind me. Well, you're in the right spot. <laughs> Wonderful, because music, I've shared it with you all the time. I, I listen to different genres of music, but uh, Shanti has got me hung up on past me, not on gentle savior. She mentioned that about, about three weeks ago. There's not a day go by that I don't that I don't play that song. It just it, it reminds me of my childhood too, but it's just there's certain gospel songs, other music, but but the gospel songs that refresh you, I can go there and I'll be refreshed, be refreshed. I really enjoy uh, going on a hike, um, just being in nature and, and enjoying all that, that there is. That kind of refreshes me. Um, and then I was reading in Exodus this morning, I think it was Exodus 34, and when he was when uh, Moses was on the mountain and God was speaking to him, he was saying that the men would leave three times a year. And so the fellowship with the men and, and being with God those three times a year is, is a way that we could all refresh ourselves. And, and somewhat like you were saying for Paul and Philemon, that, that fellowship, that friendship, um, that closeness that we can have together um, just reminded me of that this evening. Wonderful. I remember the times I used to go for a hike. I don't do too much of that in the morning, but I crave it. I, I just don't even know 
I can't even put into words what it would mean to go for a hike. Like, I can't put it off right now. See what hike while you can. And some of those pictures you had sent back out in the mountains a few weeks ago, you keep on doing it, man. Thank you. What refreshes you, beloved? The smallest of simple things. I feel encouraged. I feel refreshed when I have opportunities to encourage other people. And those opportunities come up, seem like right when I need encouragement. And so it just really refreshes me to encourage somebody else. Hey, you, you hit the nail on the head. That's where it comes from. No matter what it is we do for ourselves, it's what we give to the other person. You're hitting Philemon right on the head. The love for the saints. The caring enough to tell somebody you matter. I just I noticed the other day when you were on Zoom or when I saw you here or this or whatever that that uh, you 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 you're saying one thing, but you seem to be a little bit down. So I just want to just want to check with you. To send somebody a text, send them something, and and um, sometimes it is a hug, but whatever the most simplest thing. Just, just, just now I'm, 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 I'm a, I'm a mess with you now. Imagine this now. Imagine this. that every day of your life, somebody that was important to you would hold you close and whisper in your ear, "I find no." in you. And you know they meant it. It doesn't mean you haven't had false or issues, but on this morning, I just want to love you and encourage you and refresh you. And, and, and these are not always lovers or husbands and stuff, but somebody that, that, that you matter to and they matter to you. Just, can you imagine saying being to somebody, hold up a second, I want you to listen to me. Listen to me. I, I find no fault in you. Satan would go crazy. He would go crazy and try to pull up everything inside you, make you think about everything and all that. But the Holy Spirit and God's power and love and compassion, when we do this as a lifestyle, that's how we start to think. The other person hadn't changed. It's just that because you're in the business of refreshing and not judging and criticizing and, and, and carrying on all of those stuff and letting go of something. I, I, I find no fault in you. Hmm. Now I said a person, not the mirror. It's an end about doing that in the mirror. But if you gotta practice, go ahead with go ahead with the person in the mirror. <laughs> Just start where you can, okay? I have no business telling you I'm trying to limit you. If that's where you have to start, and then once you get used to helping yourself, then maybe you can help somebody else. So I always remember I find no fault in you. Well beloved, I'm not gonna hold you up. I see that. Uh, our time is rapidly approaching, and um, I just hope and pray that we encouraged you in some way. And that however it is that you refresh other people, that you allow yourself to be refreshed. And it's going to, it's going to take a whole lot of refreshing, a whole lot of weary people. Um, that just comes with the time that we're in. And no matter what, it's a weird sometimes. It just wears you out. Um, but then be not weary in well doing. Or we will reap a harvest if we faint not. Don't you faint? Devin, you still there? Yes, sir. I'm still here. Yeah, please. All right. Let us pray. 
God, we thank you for another opportunity to assemble among each other and be able to uh, study your word. Uh, God, we thank you for your love that just renews us each day, Father, and just continues to uh, cover us, Father, and, and take us through life. We thank you for your, your manservant, Father, Brother Dublin, and we thank you for <clears throat> his desire and his uh, gift to be able to uh, teach and make lessons so practical, uh, to be able to take passages that, uh, you know, that, that were left for us and be able to allow us to apply them to our lives daily. Uh, we ask that you just continue to bless him, bless his family, uh, and allow them to be able to uh, be strong for him. God, we just ask that you be with us all as we go through our week. Uh, allow us to uh, be able to have productive weeks. Allow us to be safe and continue to keep us covered, Father. Uh, and as we leave this place, but not your presence, God, we ask that you just continue to bless us and keep us to the next time, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to let y'all know that everybody in my household has been tested and tested. Everybody keeps coming up negative. There ain't no COVID in my house at this time. So we just praising God and I'm I'm ready to, I'm ready to get back to some normalcy. It's uh it's been a trip, believe me, but uh God has refreshed us and kept us. So I love each one of you. I find no fault in you. And I just want to honor God and praise God with you. And I appreciate you so very much. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Brother Dublin. Good night. Good night.